Hello, uh, welcome. We are in the blue segment of Limited Experience Ex Rivals of Exelon set review. Uh, as always, I am Adam, and joining me is Chris. Say hello, Chris. Yeah, yep. Hello, hello, in case you haven't heard my sarcastic interjections. Uh, our first blue common is Crashing Tide. It is tuna mm -hmm. blue for a sorcery. It has flash, so it's an instant, as long as you control a merfolk. Um, it bounces a creature and lets you draw a card. I mean, it's fine. It's an unsummon, but it's... Unless you're doing a dedicated Murphy strategy, of course. It's generally a sorcery, but it's it's not something I'm ever really happy about. As but long as you have a Murphy, it's win. just repeal, which is a good card. So I'm pretty well, up yeah. on it. If you can get a Murfolk, it's more like a 3 out of 5. But if you're not in Merfolk and you're just running any sort of blue-based tempo or control or something, it's not great. Yeah. I took kind of an aggregate rating. Okay. Um, usually it'll be like what you have around a 2 or whatever, and if you have a Merfolk, it's a 3, so it's a 2.5 kind of thing. I considered that, but man, if we're always the same thing, then it's boring. That's and true. Why would our two viewers watch? Um, up next, we have Deadeye Recaller. Here's one I'm actually excited about. Oh, yeah? It's what? a 3 and a blue, so 4 CMC for a 3, 2, which is kind of mediocre. It's a pirate, uh, and it has raid. When it ETBs, or enters the battlefield, you can attack with a creature this turn, which is the raid, little fancy words. You can return target creature to its owner's hand. So, once again, a bounce. Except this one comes with a 3, 2. Which yeah, I do like this a lot. Great. Um, it gets you a lot of tempo. A 3-2 for 4 is very honestly kind of bad, but getting to... If you're on the draw and this is your turn 4 play after they played a 4 drop, you're so far ahead of the game, it's insane. So if you break the thing apart, you get Unsummon, which is a blue, so if you cut the blue off the CMC of Deadeye Rig Hauler, that leaves you with 3 mana for a 3-2, which is great for blue. It's closer to like a half mana because of the raid. You're not always going to have raid. Sometimes you just won't have an effective attack. Sounds like somebody isn't playing blue red, which is the raid colors. I don't know. In my world, you'll always have raid, but I can understand that some people are poor, unfortunate souls. Kitesel Corsair is our next card. It's one and a blue for a two-one human pirate, and it has flying as long as it's attacking. This is an extremely aggressive card. And once again, I'm excited. I... <laughs> it's generally a welcome turn in my book. Welcome turn being a 2-drop, two 2-1 two flyer that can only block flyers. I suppose it's the opposite, but it's fine. I mean, it's never blocking, and Welcome turn also generally didn't block. <laughs> That's a reasonable enough argument. Um... Yeah, uh, the excuse me. The problem with two ones is generally they get completely blanked by <laughs> random one ones, and this doesn't just because it will fly over them. Exactly. There's no one one spirit tokens in the format. With that being said, and blue isn't has been an aggressive color in Ixalan. Outside of the very most aggressive decks, I don't think you'll actually want to be playing this super often. Yeah, I'm, I'm willing to be able to leave that, which is, I threw it at a 3, I tried to rate these things where they want to be generally, but I can understand where you're coming from. Yeah. I'm, I'd be willing to accept the 2.5, but I think our average gets it pretty well. Yeah, 2.75, that's about where it is. Um, you mentioned you like to rate things where they belong, I more rate for like the average case and an average deck, and an average deck would be okay with this and not particularly happy. In a heavy, aggressive blue deck, it's probably closer to, like, a three and a half, to be honest. If this is the exact card you'd want in a blue raid deck. Because mm -hmm. it gets past everything for the first three turns <laughs> of the game. Now, this next one screams any sort of blue raid deck or blue merfolk. For those of you who can't read, it's Miss Cloaked Herald. It's a one drop, so a single blue for a one one merfolk, and it can't be blocked. 
So in a rate strategy, you're probably getting rate every term unless they have any sort of cheap tricks. And you're also getting a lot of fun merfolk synergies. But outside of that, it's pretty well garbage. That's why I put two separate ratings on it. Yeah. It's either great or it's just jank. I took kind of, a again, an average of the two cases. Um, it might actually end up being an average of your two ratings, so that's kind of funny. But uh, I was more trying to... Hello? Um, Where'd you go? Okay. I don't think it'll be bad in anything, honestly. Like, Slitherblade was a fine card in Amonkhet, because you could throw five uh, auras on it, and it'd be a 5-5 five, five unblockable. This is a functional yeah, reprint. Yeah, didn't do anything, but yeah. It won games. I mean, so does Merfolk of the Pearl Trident, technically. It's just not as likely. But it's a Merfolk relevant the creature type. Being a one -drop one -one. <laughs> and auras were really, really good in Ixalan, so I can see this being a very, honestly, a very good card. Again, to one it, you need to be blue and aggressive, but that was most blue decks, so. Yeah. Continuing on, we have Negate. It's one in a blue instant, and it counters a non-creature. So, this is very much a sideboard card. Absolutely. I am probably never running it in the main board, unless Ixalan just proves to be, a, or Rivals, proves to be an amazingly spell-heavy format, so non-creature spell-heavy, which I don't really foresee. <laughs> I could see it snagging random enchantments, card. and then it'd feel pretty good, to be honest. Yeah, but unless they've shown me a lot of enchantments, I'm not putting it in my board. That's fair. Yeah. Or unless we know that enchantments become heavily strong, then, yeah, it's and, not a thing for me. Yeah, four enchantments were really strong. That's my only... Well, yeah. I'm probably not starting it, like, at the beginning of the format, but <laughs> if... Within like three or four weeks, it's clear that everyone's running two auras in their decks. I'll probably start one. Yeah, I'm kind of with you on that one. I want to hold out the seat, but I'd really, really rather not if I don't have to. Absolutely. Um, up next, we have River Darter. Want to talk about this one? Sure. It's two and a blue, so a three drop for three mana for a Merfolk Warrior. Um, it's a two, three, which is. It's fine. A three drop, two, three, and blue is just basically a two. And it happens to be not able to be blocked by dinosaurs. Why are we hating on dinosaurs? I have no idea. So it's what you just expect for three mana in blue, plus a small situational occasional upside. Which altogether adds up to a completely fine card. Yeah, it's nothing to write home about, but it's also nothing to send home a flag about. So it's, it's what it is. Yeah. I like it well enough. Um, dinosaur decks weren't super great in, Ixal in Ixalan, no. but in Rivals, they look like they're going to be better, so I have a little bit of hope. That and the dino decks I saw never blocked. Yeah, exactly. Um, but defensive, rampy dino decks will look like they might be a thing now, and this is a... I would almost classify this as a sideboard card, because if you're against like a heavy defensive dino deck, this just does work. Yeah, it is in a relevant creature type, but I'm probably not running it unless I need a 23rd or I'm in Merfolk. I agree. Uh, Sailor means yet another reprint. It's, uh, it doesn't need to be here. Yeah, this one is... But we'll continue. It's 2 and a blue for a 1-4, and when it enters... It's a human pirate, and when it enters the battlefield, it makes a treasure token. I mean, he's fine. He's nothing exciting, but he's an okay, he's a fine card. Yeah, every he did everything you wanted him to do. He was a one four, so he was actually really great on slowing down the hyper aggressive decks, and he mm -hmm. gave you a little bit of ramp and a little bit of fixing, and like all together, it was a good but not particularly great card. Nothing exciting, nothing disappointing. Is what it is. But that describes a lot of Ixalan, honestly, and rivals. Yeah, which is kind of disappointing, honestly. Agreed. So we also so, have... Sorry. Yeah. Oh, I was going to run through this one, because it's. I don't think it needs too all fine much talking about. This is Sea Legs. It's a single blue for a flat, or an enchantment or with flash. Enchanting a creature. 
And it, the enchanted creature gets plus O plus two as long as it's a pirate, because they're all, you know, they know how C stuff works and they're nice and steady. Otherwise, it's minus two minus O because they're busy throwing up over the side. I don't like it. I think it's super good. Like, <sighs> I'd be willing to run it in the board. It's a blue combat trick. It, sometimes. It is. That's all it does. I mean, sometimes, technically, yes, giving their dude plus O plus 2 is a combat trick. You would never give it to their dude. I mean, what if you needed to give their dude minus 2 minus So I think I know what I screwed up, actually, now that I think about it. I'm willing to, I'm, I'm willing to bump it up to a 2. I just did some math. Then I realized I'm an idiot. Yeah, um, you, it's either you swing your 2-2 two -two into their 2-2, two -two, they block and you blow them out, and then you have a 2-4. You can throw it onto like a 6-6 six, six to make it a 4-6, which makes it a lot easier to double block it. You can throw it onto a stupid 2-2 two, two flyer, and then the flyer can't do damage the rest of the game. It's a great card. That's a good point. Yeah, I it didn't click with me in my mind. So, yeah, I, I'm i bumping it up to a 2. I'm not calling it a great card. I'm calling it fine. Okay, I'll accept that. And it's a... Like, in all essence, it's a combat trick. It costs yeah. one blue mana, and it has flash. <laughs> and sometimes you'll just main phase this and throw it on a stupid flyer and then just not have to worry about the flyer ever again. And that's a, like, completely fine circumstance also. Yeah. Okay. You've convinced me that my math was wrong. It's fine. Uh, up next is Secrets of the Golden City. It's one blue-blue for a sorcery. Has a send... And you draw two cards. If you have the City's Blessing, draw three cards. This is a slightly more mana-intensive divination, and sometimes slightly better than that. I like it. I'm always fine with the divination, and in a format that, like, blue in theory only has one deck that's built for tricolor, and that's the blue, black, red, Grixis Pirates, which I've never seen be a deck in limited and actually be good. Um, or, okay, I've seen it once and actually be good, but that's a different story. Um, and who knows, that might be a thing here, but I I have never struggled for two of a color, at least on turn three. Now, if it was turn two, that could be a problem, but I would pay two mana for this any day. Yeah, uh, someone mentioned, in listening to them, uh, there is a problem with this card. One is the speed of the format, so I guess there's two problems. Um, it is a fast format. You might just not have time to cast Divination. It might just be not a thing you can conceivably do. Yeah, Additionally, one of the great things about Divination is you cast it on turn 3 to hit your 4th land drop. The yeah. fact that it costs double colors makes that very difficult for this. Yeah. Because if you keep a hand that's like Island Mountain Mountain, you just can't cast this. And then it just doesn't work as intended. I mean, I, I see. I definitely see the problems. I want to play around with it before I throw it in my popper cube or anything. But I think it has potential. Yeah, I like it enough that, it, like, you and I both gave it a three. I think it's a good card, but someone raised yeah. those points to me, and I'm like, those are good points and worth mentioning. Mm -hmm. Continuing on, we have Soul of the Rapids. It's a blue, blue three for a three, two elemental. So, again, not a relevant creature type with both flying and hexproof. And disappointment. I just I mean, can't. Like, yeah. in my uh, <laughs> completely analytical viewpoint, this is not a good card kind of thing. But I just can't see yeah. past Jade Guardian. Like, you yeah. suit this stupid thing up with Mark of the Vampire and have a 5 4 flying hexproof lifelink, and it's dumb. But, like, realistically, it's not a particularly good card. I mean, yeah, I'm, you gave it a higher rating than I did, so multiply what he said and bring in the fact that there's a fair amount at two power that can fly. Yeah. Like, now, it, as, I feel like it would be fun to throw, like, the uh, Mark of the Vampire on Soul of the Rapids, but that's also turn six. That is true. So, But... My rating was a nod to the fact that if you can throw an aura or two on this thing, it gets disgusting, but it yeah. is not a card. 
it is a card that I would happily take at like the end of pack three if I already had some or pack two I suppose because it's not gonna be in pack three. Um, if I already had good auras for it, kind of thing, I would not be picking it early though. Yes, yeah, it's, it's fine. I mean, there's a lot of there's a whole lot of cheaper stuff that kills it. Up next is a flyer that I'm actually excited about: the Spirewinder. Hmm. You know, I was thinking. This mm. just lost in the hype for a couple seconds. Um, it's three and a blue for a two three flyer. It's just the snake, so nothing special. But it has a sin, which makes sense because it does fly. Um, and if you have City's Blessing, it gets plus one plus one. So four mana for a two three flyer is kind of mediocre. But three mana for a 2-3 flyer would be good. Um, but three mana for a 3-4 flyer? I will play that any day, especially at common. Yeah. Um, usually flying is worth about a point with stats. <laughs> so four mana for a 4-4 four, four. in blue is... Four mana for a 3-4. Yeah, but with flying, you take off a point of stats, generally. Okay, I'm a little So... Four mana for a four four in blue is a great card, honestly. Um, take off a point of power to get it flying. It's still a great card in my opinion. The only it really this card is very dependent on how hard is it to ascend. Yeah. If it's its fail case as the four mana two three is completely fine and like it's exactly medium where it is. A card you could replace with any other card in your deck and probably not notice, kind of thing. Oh, yeah. But if you do a sin, it gets significantly better. Mm hmm. Swarm oh, Guardian good. is our next card. It's one and a blue for a Merfolk, and it's 1 3 vanilla. I don't like this card. Our average rating also screwed up. I fixed it, but apparently it didn't register. Yeah, sure. So, for me, it's the definition of a 2 out of 5, It's or a 1.5, which is, I guess, what our average rating was, um, in theory, or a question mark 0.5, or whatever that showed up as. Um, it's very much nothing to be excited about, but in a Merfolk deck, it's fine. It's a 2-drop. You can pump it with other things. It's just a curve filler. Yeah, I'm sure I'm being a little bit harsh on it, but 2 mana for a vanilla creature that only has 1 power is not a card I'm particularly excited about. Yeah, it feels unfun and boring. Boring is a good word. I want exciting cards, and this is not one. Water Knot is a very exciting card, though. Oh yeah, it's, it's very familiar, too. So, it's one blue-blue for an enchantment aura, enchanting creatures, and when it enters the battlefield, you tap enchanted creature. And that enchanted creature does not untap during its controller's untap step. So, who can say no to some good old blue removal with little to no problems? It's just claustrophobia. Yeah. Which, it's a functional reprint, if I'm not wrong. You're correct. It is, it is claustrophobia. Okay, yeah, just making sure I'm not crazy. And Claustrophobia is great. Yes. And Water Knot is also pretty great. Like, I have no qualms with this card. Yeah, it's a blue removal spell. It's approximately equivalent to Pacifism. And, but in blue, which is usually missing out on removal. And it's, I, like, think this card's fantastic, actually. Well, and also, it gets around the idea of... Um, just tapping for activated abilities. Yeah. Hey. It does allow you to skate past that. Water Knot is also our last common, so we're on uncommons now. I can say, before you move on to uncommons, there was a, I, one pro, one potential bad part about Water Knot, is it doesn't really get around the white paladin, the two mana 3-3 three, three that untaps when you gain life. Yep. That's such a niche. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm not saying the card's bad. The card's just great. But, but just keep in mind that it's not perfect. Yep. Uh, so our first uncommon is Aquatic Incursion. It's three and a blue for an enchantment. When it enters the battlefield, you get two one ones with Hexproof, and you can pay four mana, three and a blue, which is the cost, to give a Merfolk mm -hmm. unblockable for the turn. 
I mean, it's nowhere I'd like to be. Um, in theory, I guess it does give eventuality, but if you're at that point, your opponent's either not there or something has gone drastically wrong. Um, I guess if you're looking for like, if you have any sort of anthem effects, so bonuses based on creature type or something like that, tribal benefits, then the Merfolk part is fine, you know, but I'm still not excited about four mana for two power and toughness, even if it has hexproof. Yeah. But um, it's okay in a Merfolk deck. Yeah, the making the two one ones, I don't think it's enough at all. And oh no, it's not great. Ixalan was missing a lot of mana sinks, but this is not one that I like. Mm -hmm. Dumping four mana to make a single creature unblockable is a lot, and most of Merfolk is small. So, mm -hmm. like, you could read that as four mana, deal three damage to target player, and that's not good. Like, well, I mean, I guess on a very much corner case. If you manage to pull in pack three, the rare the from Ixalan that all your creatures have a chosen type, so then you can make, I don't know, Zapalta or something, a Merfolk, and make him unblockable or I'm not sure, then that's fun, but at that point you're playing Commander. Yeah. Um, just, it's... <laughs> it's two half cards that mm -hmm. I don't think come together to make a whole card. It's like that. it's like a third of a card and a half card or something and all together it's just this card like this effect is not worth a card to me. I would try my hardest to not play this outside of very specific corner cases. I'm I'm okay with it at a 1.5 then it doesn't have to be a 2. But I guess that even up. So Curious Obsession on the enchantment train here is a blue, just a one drop, for an aura enchanting a creature. And the enchanted creature gets plus one, plus one, and whenever that creature deals combat damage to a player, or it has this effect, so the enchantment isn't having the effect the actual creature gets the effect of. Whenever it deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card, which is amazing. That's an Ophidian right there. Um, but at the beginning of your end step, if you didn't attack with a creature this turn, you have to sacrifice the enchantment. Now, notice that it says a creature and not enchanted creature. So you can just swing in a 1 1 garbage and keep your curious obsession for later if you know that your person isn't going to actually make it. Yeah. I like this card. I think it's kind of great. I'm firmly in the good camp. Um,. Historically, the problem with Curiosity, which is what this card's based on, is that it didn't give plus one one of stats. And I think the additional stats is worth the quote-unquote raid part of the ability. Mm -hmm. um, and all of it together is well worth a mana. You can just throw this on a two drop, get in with a three three, and draw a card, and it has already like a hundred percent done its job. Oh yeah, and if you can, it's. One of the things that makes that one drop one one unblockable playable. Like oh yeah. If I've got a bunch of stuff like this, yeah, I'm okay picking him up or her. If I throw two curious obsessions on it, get in with a three three that draws me two cards a turn. That's great. That'd be living the dream. I gotta be honest. My dreams aren't that good, Adam. Um, you need better dreams. I'll be on like. This is what I think about when I make limited. Is how can I make my limited deck into a commander deck? I think getting hyped to play a goblin piker on turn two. <laughs> Our next card is Expel from Araska. It's one in a blue instant. It has Ascend. Uh, you can bounce a, er, a non-land permanent, so it doesn't have to be a creature, to its owner's hand. If you have the city's blessing, you may put that card on top of the opponent's library instead. This is what I want in an unsummon that costs more than one mana. Like, this is kind of great. I City's Blessing, so you're not always going to have it. So I'm okay with, in this case, kind of ignoring it, because it's still a bounce spell. Yeah. And unsummon has always been playable. And I think in this situation, especially since they're, if it's anything like Ixalan, auras are better than they used to be. So I feel like bounce is going to be 
better than it has been in the past. So that's why I gave it three point five. Because it get or it effectively kills auras. Mm-hmm. And if need be, you can bounce your own aura and reuse it somewhere else. That actually, I didn't think of that one. Um, it's also important to note if you're going to bounce your own stuff, the ascend is a may. So if you want to bounce your own thing, you don't have to put it on top of your library. You can just put it mm-hmm. back in your hand. That's um, why Adam pays me the big bucks. I think of these things. Yeah. Um, I do like it. I think I'm kind of having a... Um, I'm trying to think of a way to say it. I don't... Like, Ascend makes it such a quarter case that I almost downgraded the card for having it, which is weird to say like that, but... I, that's why I ignored it. Yeah. Because I don't really like a sin. It feels weird. I agree. Um, next card we have is Flood of Recollection. Which is blue-blue for a disappointment. That's, that's it. <laughs> next card? The next card is Hornswoggle. No, um, we should probably actually talk about Flood of Recollection a little bit. Fine. So... What's happening in the picture here is, in case you didn't know, Jace keeps losing all his memories, and now he gets them all back. So, Hornswoggle... <laughs> no. This card is basically unplayable and limited. It, um, it bounces an instant or sorcery from your graveyard to your hand, and then you have to exile, Flood of Recollection. You have to have a very, very, very good reason to play this card, like three or more instants and sorceries you'd be very happy getting back in order to even want this card. Usually you don't. And you know what one of, you know one of those instants and sorceries that you probably don't want to get back? Hornswoggle. Are you, are you about so to the say, next yeah, card, <laughs> it is two and a blue for an instant. Um, you hornswoggle a creature spell, which is roughly equivalent to countering it. And you get a treasure token, which of course taps to sack the artifacts and makes one mana of any color. This is fine. I mean, it's certainly not exclude, which is the same thing, except instead of a treasure, you draw a card. Yeah. But I actually noticed there's a lot of fine. instants in this set that cost X amount more than a very similar card, but you get that many treasures. Like Hornswoggle is Essence Scatter, but one more and you get one treasure. Um, there's a and red. A rarity shift. There is a rarity shift. There's a red uncommon, I think, that's tormenting voice, but for four, and then it makes you two treasures. Yep. A rarity shift with some treasure. Yep. Um, altogether, I don't like creature counters in limited. They are generally bad. I like them better than non-creature counters. Fair. Because they're probably going to be running creatures. This is magic, and it's not non-limited, so. But. It's Generally fine. speaking, a creature counter spell isn't worth the creature that you're countering. Like, I mean, it's not great. I'm not saying it's great. That's why I gave it a two. Oh yeah, no, I agree. Like, I agree with both our ratings and our average. I think that's about right. But I just wanted to make the point. I don't. Usually, you'll be countering a random four drop with this, which is mana efficient. Like, you get your mana's value out of that. But holding up three mana to counter a four drop when it's like a 3-3 three, three that gains you two life or something. Like, that's a fine card to be countering, but it's not, like, constructed, where their four drops instantly win the game, because reasons. But you know what it is better than? Flood of Recollection. So our next card is an actually good card. Yes. Um, Riverwise Augur. It's three and a blue, so four mana for a merfolk. It's a 2-2 two, two or she, not sure. I think it's a he, though. And went into the battlefield... Draw three cards, and put two cards from your hand on top of your library in any order. So this card is really, really good. So it's three and a blue, cast a brainstorm, make a two-two, which is excellent. Oh yeah, I think that's awesome. Um, it's important to note with uh, brainstorm effects, which this is, uh, the two cards that you put back do not have to be from the three that you drew. They can be any card in your hand. Like um, all those extra Flood of Recollections you've been saving up to yeah. brainstorm away later. Uh, that gets really good with things like... Um, there's only one in, or a few in this set, but things that shelter your library, like Evolving Wilds. Because mm-hmm. then you can put the two cards you really, really don't need on top. Like two more Evolving Wilds. 
and then shuffle your entire deck so they're not the cards you draw anymore, which is... Exactly. Uh, but even so, doing something like playing this on four and putting a land and a six drop, like, as your next two draws, like, that is a fine... You'll draw a land next turn, you'll play a five drop, you'll draw a six drop next turn, you'll play a six drop, and, like... This is a card in an Ixalan draft format I'm legitimately excited to pick. Yeah, I agree. Our next card is Silvergirl Adept, which is another card I'm legitimately excited to play with. It, it is, is a really modern good. staple. It's one and a blue for a Merfolk. It's a 2-1. When you cast it, you either reveal another Merfolk from your hand, or it costs three more, making it five mana, four and a blue. And when it enters the battlefield, you draw a card. And it's a 2-1. I don't remember if that was stated, but... I did, but nonetheless. Okay, I didn't hear you. I also like the artwork um, on this a lot. I think it's really, really oh, pretty. Yeah. I think this card's just good. Like, 2-drop, two 2-1 two in a relevant creature type is fine. That's a s solid 2 and limited. It's not an uncommon by any means, but... When that comes with a free card... Like, oh, I'm gonna cycle this only at sorcery speed, and it just happens to make a 2-1. Yeah. Um... Also, like, 5 mana for it isn't good. Like, you're not happy paying 5 <laughs> mana for it, but that's not the worst thing. Like, a 5 mana 2-1 that yeah. draws a card is okay. It's still a card. It's a card. Um, Silver Galadip is definitely the best of the cycle. Because, in case you haven't noticed, because we've only done two of them so far, each tribe does get one of these additional cost revealers. I think this is the first one. Wasn't there a white one for vampires? No, uh, vampires is black. It's the one that has flying and lifelink. I might be crazy. Yeah. I'll do some side research. You're then. Th I think you're thinking of Forerunner the Legion, the vampire that searches for other vampires. That's true, probably. Anyway, um, yeah, I like Silver Gold Adept a lot. I think it's a super good card. All that it asks is that you play more folks, which isn't particularly difficult to do. And on to the next, which is Siren Reaver. Three this is and a blue also kind of great. Yeah, it's three and a blue for a three two, which is already fine. Like that's not a bad. And it's card. a pirate. And it's a pirate, and it has raid, so it has flying. That's where that comes in. Three and a blue for a three two flyer. It's fine. And it has raid, so if you've attached with a creature this turn, it costs one less to cast. So it can be a three mana three two flyer, which is awesome. Oh yeah, I will play that all day every day, especially since my blue decks don't ever stop attacking. Must be my Interactos. Yeah. I think this card's great. I don't know why you only gave it a 2.5. I think the fact that there's a lot of random X2, or 2x flyers <laughs> makes me down on this card a little bit. I don't think 2.5 was partic like entirely fair, but I don't think 3 was quite right either. You gave this card the same rating you gave Soul of the Rapids, and that's just sacrilege. Yeah, that's fair. This probably deserves a 3 out of me. <clears throat> so, our next, not truly disappointing, but not truly inspiring, is Slippery Scoundrel. It's two and a blue for a 2 2 pirate with a sin, and if you get the city's blessing, she gets hexproof and unblockable. I mean, yeah. that's fine. It's not great. Yeah, but it really feels like it should be a Merco. I agree. Uh, I do have a. Do you know why they template it like that? Has tax proof and can't be blocked instead of has tax proof and unblockable? They changed unblockable a long time ago. That's not a word anymore. Yeah, but like, do you know why? I don't know. I always still call it unblockable. Yeah, everyone does. That's why I was curious. <laughs> Regardless, um, yeah, this is very uninspired at its face value. A three mana two two in blue. That's a pretty average base card. A little bit worse than you'd ask for. Uh, the flip side of it with uh, Ascend, it will eventually end a game. You'll swing with a 2-2 unblockable for 5 turns, and they'll take 10 damage, and you'll win. And it hopefully has, you're doing something else in addition to that. But. Hopefully you're doing other things, but like it gives you a form of inevitability, <laughs> and if you can throw an equipment on it or whatever, it's a reasonable clock by the time Ascend is active, they're probably, you know, have taken a few damage over the course of the game, it needs to get in. Let's assume it has plus one one somehow, it needs to get in three times to win or whatever. Uh, 
I think I'm a little optimistic on it. Uh, in this case, thinking I like it enough on its ascent side that I'm willing to forgive its devil. Yeah, you I think it's just okay. Okay. It's, it's fine. It's a three-drop pirate. It sometimes says some stuff. This right. next one, though, since we're into rare, is actually interesting. So, it's Admiral's Order. So, it's an instant. Um, one blue blue for counterpart spell. But, if you have raid on, so you attack with a creature this turn, you can pay a blue instead of its mana cost. That's sometimes great, but if only really if they're using counter or not counter magic combat tricks. So you swing them with some stuff, they kill your stuff, you add and resort it. That's I think best case scenario for this. The other uh best case scenario would be um you go to play something main phase two and they try to kill it and you solve raid, so it still counts. But yeah, that's about the best yeah. you can hope for. And the down like the flip side is cancel, which is begrudgingly playable in a blue deck. Very occasionally, yeah. If I need a 23rd. So, at worst, it's an alright last card in your deck, and at best, it's mm -hmm. like an actively good card. And mm -hmm. I'm, I'm kind of in for it. I like it. Our next card is Crafty Cut Purse. It's 3 and a blue for a 2 2 with Flash. It's a human pirate. And when it enters the battlefield, each token an opponent would get this turn, you get instead. I mean, a three mana two two flash. It's a four is mana. Fine, I know. That's, okay. I'm not getting there. So you're effectively paying one mana to get whatever token they have. If they're playing dinosaurs, that's probably good. Yeah, the joke here is she steals treasure like that. Yeah, but she doesn't steal treasure. She steals three three dinosaurs with trample. Yeah, but that's. I'm not wasting this for a treasure. That's absolute best case scenario, and I don't like. You're you'll never want to play this if they're not making a token, and you'll feel really bad when you pass with four mana up, and then they just play a five five, and you your four mana flash does nothing. Oh, I understand. I it's not amazing. Um. But I think it's fine. I mean, there are enough scenarios where it can be awesome that it makes me excited. Now, I will submit that it might just be I'm getting excited because it's a rare that does fun things. I agree. But, I'm excited about it. I'm just not sure how good it is. I think the math from the flavor text matches up with my math here. Yeah. So I'm that, willing to get in character. It is probably my favorite flavor text of the format. I think it's fantastic. But I don't know, I like Strider Harness, but we'll get there. Yeah. Continuing on, we have Induced Amnesia. It's two and a blue for an enchantment, and when it enters the battlefield, a player, you get to pick. Nothing happens. Oh, okay. Yeah, it, it does do a thing. Uh, a target player exiles all the cards from their hand face down and then draws that many cards. And then when it goes into a graveyard, they get to pick up their exiled cards again. This We're isn't good. No, if you can flicker it. Or cast it and then kill it. That's kind of cool. But beyond that, it's kind of just jank garbage that fills the story spotlight slot. Yeah. Um, my rating is if you have a reveal effect like Duress again, you can Duress them, and if they have a hand you absolutely can't beat, Induced Amnesia gets you out of it. It's mm -hmm. And then if they have enchantment removal, you're right back in it, so it's not a very good solution. I mean, philo philosophically, it's very red. Temporarily put away the problems. Yeah. Um, but I'm not playing it. Yeah, they, the dream of it is obviously what you said. Play it on yourself. <laughs> exile five cards, draw five, and then enchant room removal. It gets to pick up your five cards again and completely reload your yeah. hand. But that that in all of the drafts of Ixalan that happens, that will happen one time, kind of thing. Yeah, and not per person either. No, yeah, one person will get to do it, and they'll feel great. But in a normal deck, it's basically unplayable. Yeah. Speaking of what I think is unplayable, 
I, I noticed um, this little card here is Kumina's Awakening, two blue blue for enchantment with a sin. And at the beginning of your upkeep, each player draws a card. So it's sort of a howling mind deal. Um, if you have a city's blessing, instead only you draw a card. I don't think it's great. Adam thinks it's notably less great. Um, <laughs> I think I'm willing to experiment with it in, like I'm not playing it until I have City's Blessing. If there's any sort of control deck, I want to try it. Okay. Um, with the writer of I'm literally not playing it until I have the City's Blessing, fine. But it's still, at best, a 4-mana Howling Mine, which I don't think is a good card. No, that's not a good card. But... I mean, beyond that, I don't want to mess around with it. I'm willing to accept that my rating is too high. It's but also a four mana card that does literal nothing on the turn you play it, and that is very worrisome. And that intrigues me. Okay. It's like a six mana card with zero power. Like, what? What do you? What is it supposed to do? There's something missing here. Well, there's nothing missing. It draws you cards, but it also lets your opponent exactly. draw cards unless you have the ascending ascension. It has those magic words. Three, those three little words. No, not I love you. The real three little little words. Draw a card. Like, I think you are irresponsibly high on this, but okay. Um, Honestly, I, don't think it's good. I wasn't that high until you started fighting back, and then I realized, wait a second. This is fun. But now that all that hoot nanny's gotten done with, here's a card you're high on. Yeah, it's. I think it's great. It's Nezahal, the Primal Tide. It's 5 blue blue for a 7-7 seven, seven legendary elder dinosaur. Nezahal can't be countered. While it's in play, you don't have a maximum hand size. If an opponent casts a non-creature spell like a removal, draw a card. And then you can discard 3 cards to... Ex essentially bounce it, but or flicker it is the word. Exile it, and then it comes back at the beginning of the uh, end step. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you play so, this card, you just win. I don't... So, uh, you first of all, you have to play a 7-drop in an Ixalan format. That's your first, first downer there. And well, my thought of, wait a second... If it's at least turn 7, I'm estimating at least more like turn 9 or 10, if you're getting this on some semblance of a curve. Well, how many cards have you drawn? That's 17 right there. And assuming you have drawn any more cards, you're going to be drawing a lot of cards off this, and I have the strange feeling that somebody's going to be milled out with their own Nezahal, or Nezahal, whatever it may be, just because their opponent's casting on creature spells. I want to do that to someone. Like, I don't, I don't care if I lose the entire rest of the round. I want to do that to somebody. I want to mill them with their own Nizal. Yeah. I agree. The mana cost is steep. But, A, one of the problems with 6, 7, and 8 drops is you can't guarantee them. If you try to play them, they could be countered. <laughs> he literally can't. And if they try to remove him, you at least get the card back. They <clears throat> two for one themselves. Well, yeah. Unless they drop a creature that kills it. There's one of in the format? Two? Yeah, that's an uncommon. With, that costs four mana, it's probably already been used. That being said, I think it's great. Our average rating's probably actually correct. Um, like, I, do you have anything else to say about it before we move on? No, I think we're good to move on past Falafel onto our next card, which is Release to the Wind. It's two and a blue for an instant. Exile target, not land permanent. I'm excited. What's the downside? For as long as that card remains exiled, its owner may cast it without paying its mana cost. Great. So it's a uh, flicker, sort of. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it does screw up combat math. Like, oh yeah, it really screws up combat math. They swing with a 6-6 six, six and a 4-4. Four, four. You flicker the 6-6, six, six, double block the 4-4. Four, four. You come out ahead. Um... I like. I almost feel like it should in some way have a send to where like the without send, paying its mana cast cost it. clause isn't there unless you've ascended and then you can kind of thing. But where would you put it on the card? 
it, it wouldn't like it would be hilariously awful to template but like i feel like that would make the card significantly better and like good for a rare um it also like pseudo deals with a blocker for a turn like you get rid yeah. of their five five and you have a big swing and then they cast their five five again a three man a single fog great yeah now there are relevant tokens but there's only true. about one of them that you really excited about spinning three man to get rid of. I am sure we'll hit times where even with um like they go to cast an ascend instant and you flicker one of their creatures and then they don't have ascension anymore kind of thing. I think this That's will have true. enough utility that it will be fine. Which that yeah. looks like where you're at too. Yeah. We're arguing and it's the same same result. Um What's this next card? Leaf Lore Oracle. Awesome. It's two blue blue for a 2-3 Merfolk. And if it cur whenever a Merfolk you control deals combat damage to a player, draw a card. Those three magic words. Yep. I am possibly too excited about this card. No, I, I think you're about right. Uh, it's notable that it doesn't say whenever one or more, so you draw cards per Merfolk. Yeah, that's awesome. Which means you're milling yourself. Do not care. It's right up there with the falafel mil get milled. Like, I, it's the fact that I've accomplished that. It's like when you're playing commander and both players have um, consecrated sphinx. Which, for those of you who don't know, whenever an opponent draws a two card, and if you both have that, you just shake hands and they can predict and leave. Yeah, and because real men always draw cards off of consecrated sphinx. Exactly. Back to what I was saying about this card. A lot of merfolk are small. So mm -hmm. if you swing for five damage, you're drawing four cards, and that will empty your deck fast. That being said, drawing four cards is a really good way to win Magic the Gathering. I think this card's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't think we have anything else to say about it either. Okay. I have one more thing to say. Um, if we go with that once again, the enchantment from Ixlon that I frankly always forget the name of, even if I'm steering right at it. The thing that's basically a conspiracy where you change all your things to be a certain type. Uh, arcane would, adaptation. Yes, the thing that isn't conspiracy entirely. Um, I would very much love to swing in with, like, I don't know, say a 12 12 trample, then maybe just pretend it's a merfolk and draw a card. That'd be satisfying. That would be extremely satisfying. That is one of my new goals in Rivals Limited. Honestly, though, that's, that's about all I had to say. So okay. this next card is, I'm going to say, regardless of what you're saying, because I love it. Um, Warkite Marauder, it's one blue for a 2-2 two, two pirate, or 2-1 two, two, one. One pirate, which is, meh, that's a 2 right there. Um, but it has to fly. Okay, where's the downside? We've got another welcome turn. Um, when it attacks, target creature defending player controls loses all abilities and has base power and toughness 0-1 until end of turn. I'm still waiting for the downside. It's not there. I think this card's awesome. This card is all upside. I think it is... Um, I like that it has, like, pseudo-unblockable, because most decks will only have one flyer on the field at once, and it just makes mm -hmm. it a not-flyer. It also hilariously screws up combat math, because you make their 6-6 six, six a 0-1, mm -hmm. and suddenly their blocks are awful. Oh, yeah. And you get rid of their guy who had a cool and rage. <laughs> Guess you lose all abilities. Yeah, but them having a cool and. Uh, a cool raid ability. Enrage. No, okay. enrage. Enrage. Not yes. enrage. I don't think that's a mechanic. I heard that has a cool raid ability, and I'm like, that doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. Um. I mean, you can get rid of their rate ability, but it doesn't... It hasn't accomplished much. No, yeah, I like this card a lot. I think it's super sweet. Again, my one knock against it is that it's a 2-1 with flying, and that there's enough things That's... in the format that punishes that that it worries me a little bit. Where's the pinger? Um, there's three. I can think of one offhand. I'm blanking on the other two. There's I guess the, the green out. red dinosaur that whenever it attacks, it pings. Yep. There's the goblin that you can... Uh, it's a 1-1 one, one with haste. Okay, red. the pain goblin, yep. Um, I think there's a third one somewhere. There's the stupid... Red... Pain wrath? What? 
the pain wrath. Yeah. That we'll talk about later, and we shouldn't waste the time on now, and we can waste the time on it later. Yeah, but there's enough things that punish X ones that that worries me, but that it's my only mm -hmm. knock against this card. I think it's actually great. Yeah, I think it's great. The last card in our review is Time Stream Navigator. It's one in a blue for a 1 1 human pirate wizard. What a creature problem. type. It has Ascend, and for two blue blue, and tap it. If you have the city's blessing, you put Time Stream Navigator onto the bottom of its owner's library and take an additional turn. He said bottom, by the way, since he cut out there. It goes on the bottom of its owner's library, which at the point where you're casting that, is it the only thing in your library? Yeah, I, I think the dream is putting this onto the bottom of your library, redrawing it, and then having le exactly lethal kind of thing. That no, no, your dreams are weak, sir. My dreams are to give it haste every day do this every day. Yeah. That being said, I don't actually think it's a good card. Hence why our Kool-Aid rating is a 1.25. Yeah. Um... It, you play on turn 2, you trigger rain on turn 3. Like It has uses, but not, none of them are exciting. Yeah, it, it's a 2-drop relevant creature type. You'll play it turn, like you said, play it turn 2, <laughs> swing with it, give it raid. It will die, because a 1-1 one, one swinging into anything will die. And, like, the Ascend side of it's not even super... Like, taking an extra turn is broken. But, like, paying four mana and taking it off the field... and like, It doesn't seem good enough. Yeah. I expect to see a lot of people try and pull this off of pre-release. Well, it's a mythic, so I don't expect to see a lot of people. I expect to see everyone who pulls one well, to try Well, I'm it. going to five pre-releases. That's fair. Um, that, so. that also wraps up our blue review. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to yeah. mention about the aggregate cards, if you will? Or specific ones, for that matter? Um, no, other than I look forward to hearing all the different ways to pronounce falafel. If you remember, Falafel is the elder dinosaur of the blue persuasion. Nezahal. His name is Nezahal. Or it could be Nezahal, or it could be Nezahal. There's three different syllables you can put the emphasis on. So I am still calling it Falafel. Prime okay. Time. Um, we will see you guys whenever you start the next video, I suppose. We will see you, but you'll see lack, us, so that's what matters. Which I think might be... Black definitely has some of my favorite cards from this set, and I think it might be coming up on the best color. Spoilers. Spoilers, Jeez. indeed. Uh, we'll see you guys oh. as soon as you start the next episode. Mm-hmm.